Welcome to Scale Model Basics. I'm Aaron Skinner, and today we're going to be looking at an aspect of airbrushing. Now, airbrushing involves three variables. The size of the nozzle, the consistency of the paint, in other words, how thin it is, and then air pressure. Today we're looking at the final one of those, pressure, which is the one that you can adjust most easily on the fly using a regulator attached to your air supply. Not the I'm all out of love kind of air supply, but the one attached to your airbrush. Whether it's a compressor or a tank or whatever, the regulator allows you to control this variable, which I find gives you the most variety in your finishes. So when you're setting your regulator, one of the things to keep in mind is that the pressure that you set it at is going to lose more pressure when you depress the trigger, so you want to adjust it for that. So I'm going to set it to about the lowest pressure I've been able to successfully airbrush at, which is about 8 psi. Any lower than that, and the paint doesn't atomize very well. It tends to splatter more than the paint. Now I'm using Tamiya X7 Red, mixed about 50-50 with thinner. Put some of this in my airbrush cup. And I've got some primed styrene here. So let's see what 8 psi looks like. see it sprays a thin line, but you'll also notice that it's a little bit ragged, it's a little bit fuzzy at the edges, but I can get close with this pressure too, so you can get a nice fine line. So let's dial this up to a common pressure for certain types of paint is 15 to 12 to 15. So this should atomize the paint a little better. Much higher line. Still a bit fuzzy, but I can still get in pretty close and get a fairly tight line. One of the pressures I like to work at a lot of the time is around 20. 20 to 25, we'll go with 20 right now. So um, you can see it definitely more paint coming out, but it's a lot less ragged at the edges. So try a finer line. It's a little harder to maintain control with a finer line because there's more paint coming out. But you can get good coverage fairly quickly with that pressure. At 30 PSI, so you get a, a lot tighter align, a lot less fuzz at the edges. It's also a lot harder, you have to be a lot more on the ball if you're trying to spray a fine line because there's a lot of paint coming out of there. But you can see on that fine line how tight that pattern is. And then finally, there are some modelers who work up at the high range. Let's go with 50 PSI. Now this is a lot of pressure, so you're going to have a lot of paint coming out of this, this brush. So just be aware of that. But you get a good dark line with that. I mean, that's, that's like full coverage right out of the thing. But you'll also notice it's pretty fine. A finer line, and you can see that you're getting to see one of the risks of higher pressure is you get a lot of paint coming out, so you can get these almost like a it's akin to a spidering, but you get more paint at the edges where it's bleeding out a little bit. Again, you can see the almost like a tide mark. So that's why I wouldn't recommend starting at 50 psi, and that's a little look at what pressure will do. So we're back from the workshop, so let's take a look at what the advantages and disadvantages are of these different pressures. The low pressure puts out a little paint, but the pattern is a little bit loose. You do get some more control because you don't have as much paint hitting the surface, so mistakes are less obvious, that kind of thing. But again, that pattern's a little loose and a little ragged. The higher pressures give you more paint, tighter pattern, 
but there's a risk, particularly at very high pressures, of runs and spiders. You've got to keep that brush moving all the time. Good rule of thumb for airbrushing, period, but essential when you're working with high pressures. So, what pressure should you be using? Well, that's a matter of a couple of different factors. One, the type of finish that you're working on. If you're spraying an overall finish on a model, then you might go for a medium pressure, 20, 25 PSI that puts just the right amount of paint on there, allows it to go on wet, and so you're overlapping wet passes. If you're working in details or a fine camouflage pattern, go for a lower pressure where you can maintain control a little better and you're not flooding the surface with paint and risking runs. The other thing is personal choice. You know, experiment. Try the different pressures and find what gives you the finish that you're comfortable with and you're confident in every time. That about wraps it up. Thanks for watching. I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next time.